Glory to God, all those people that are watching online tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in on Tuesday night. This is the happening place to be. <laughs> so say this with me. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, one more time. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. One more time. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm just switching microphones here. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so blessed to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. How many people thank God for Tuesday night prayer? Praise the Lord. It's just a lovely welcome break. It's like a little drink in the middle of the week. Amen. Just to top us up from one weekend to the next. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We take authority over sickness, sickness, disease, infirmity, viruses. Hallelujah. Of any sort. Come on, let's just take authority right now. Praise the Lord. All respiratory issues. In the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Rose Sandbrook to you right now. In the name of Jesus, we command her blood oxygen levels to go back to normal. In the name of Jesus, she travels again this Saturday back to the United States. She's going to be here Monday night with us, with uh, Chuck Pierce. And on Tuesday night, praise the Lord, so we need rose and fine fettle, praise the Lord. You all say that here, fine fettle? It's a great one. Look at your neighbor and say, sure you're in fine fettle, hallelujah. <laughs> I think we could make that an oaky, huh? Fit as a fettle. Fiddle. Oh, fiddle. We're fine as fettle. <laughs> fit as a fiddle, we do, but you know, you're in fine fettle. You know, it's, it's much better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been getting to know Brita? Anybody fallen in love with Brita? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, don't be getting nervous. It's not an Irish takeover. We haven't, we, haven't got a back, we haven't got a back door, and we're not making money bringing all the Irish in. Praise the Lord. But, but just saying, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is faithful. I want to declare this tonight. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Receive it. Come on, take it right now. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. We take it again. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to receive tonight's tithes and offerings, and then I want to just take you a direction tonight and uh, go back a little bit in something that I said in the Wednesday day of prayer uh, that I'm very convicted about, and I need more and more people to hear it. Praise the Lord. I read from this little book, uh, America at the Threshold of Destiny, and it was a little book that's now from, uh, well, Francis Frangipan's with the Lord, and uh, so he's, he's looking, he really knows whether what he said is right or wrong. <laughs> How many people knows that? <laughs> he knows whether this is right or wrong. We're hoping, but he knows, praise the Lord, but it's, it's a phenomenal read, and I was blessed with this little book. And, this little book gave me so many answers to questions that, that, that I had, and um, I just love how God does that. In many always places within our hand at the time that we need it. How many people thank God for that? Tonight, honestly, before you leave, uh, please see uh, Neil. I don't know if Jane is here, but Neil is here. I know that. But please see Neil before you leave tonight. Really, if you need help with anything to do with the election, uh, they will gladly um, help you uh, with that to ensure that you actually are registered and uh, that you are ready for that. Can I have a big amen? amen. And if there's any uh, reason that you think that you're going to be traveling over that, they will get you hooked up with absentee and all of those different things. So, already, already, everybody, amen. Let's go to Genesis 26, 12 to 14. Genesis 26. Amen. We, we've been in days of preparation where the Lord is preparing us. And I ask for the youth to stay in tonight because I believe what I'm going to say is for them as much as it is for us. Because they are the future of America. 
uh, if the Lord tarries, praise the Lord. Karn and myself, we were rejoicing on the way here, and it's like the Lord has really been impressing upon Pastor Karn is we cannot leave the earth. <laughs> we cannot. We have to believe. We're believing for the rapture. Anybody believing for the rapture? And she is so convicted is that the Lord needs people here for it. And we will be, but in, in the sense of what she's saying is that we need to stick around and not leave the earth anytime soon. Can I have a big amen? So just lift your hand and say, I'm going nowhere. Hallelujah at the minute. Praise the Lord. Amen. You make that declaration. That is your declaration. That's your profession of faith. Amen. Everything in your body is lining up with that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to run strong all the days of your life. Praise the Lord. If you weren't here Sunday night, there was a tremendous impartation that was given. And I'm just before the Lord tonight. If we were to do that again at the end of the service for those who, who missed that on Sunday night, praise the Lord, because I just believe that the Lord is stirring people in, in the realm of prayer. And there's a lot of prayer that comes by the laying on of hands, the workings of prayer. Amen. And people sometimes don't understand that, but there are workings of prayer that come by the laying on of hands. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for all those hands that have been laid upon me through all those years. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some hands laid on me for hours praying in the Spirit. Amen. And stirring that up. And hands that I have laid on people for hours stirring those things up. So don't be... Uh, alarmed if we don't have longer periods of time where we're actually praying for people and stirring, stirring things up. Can I have a big amen? So Genesis 26, 12, take a look at this. I want you to shut it out. I'm making it. I'm making it. So then Isaac sowed, in, sowed seed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord favored him. I want to declare that over you tonight, that the Lord favors you. How many people will receive that? And the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. I love how it doesn't leave out distinguished. I like that. I like it that the people of God can become distinguished. Hallelujah. Isn't that nice? He owned flocks, herds, and a great supply of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We take it. Now Psalm 37, 18 to 19 in the New Living Translation says this. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent. And they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. Hallelujah. Well, two of us lifted our hands and received that. Hallelujah. I receive it in the name of Jesus. That even in famine, even in times where it looks like people are being economically pressured or squeezed, amen, this gives us hope in the name of Jesus. Shut it out. I receive hope. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You know, in Genesis 26:13. It says in the New Living Translation, he became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. I want you to underline that and highlight that. He became a very rich man. Amen. If you're female here tonight, you became a very rich woman. And your growth continues to grow, or your wealth continues to grow. In Genesis 26, 28 and 29, it says the men saw that the blessing was on Isaac. And they had to admit it. So I declare it in the name of Jesus in these days, just as we're coming up to the rapture, that people are seeing the blessing of the Lord upon your life. I don't look at your life just the way it is now. Everything is subject to change. Praise God for the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God rising within us, coming upon us, giving us clear direction, giving us unction. Amen. And what we're to do, praise the Lord. One day can change everything. One word from God can change your life forever. How many people actually believe that? Just one word. Praise the Lord. I, I believe, but I, I believe that what the Lord has been instructing us to do over these last several weeks and months is to, to be in a state of preparedness. Amen. Amen. So say that with me. I am in a state, am in a state 
of preparedness. preparedness. Amen. Strong physically. Amen. Becoming strong financially. Uh, all of those different things. And you know what? Even if you've only 20 bucks more than what you had two weeks ago, you're still going in the right direction. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so don't be getting, you know, uh, discouraged by s slow growth. Amen. As long as you're growing. Right. Praise the Lord. So say this with me. I'm growing. I'm growing. If you couldn't pay a bill last week and you can pay a bill this week, that's still advancement. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Exodus 16, let's go over there. Exodus 16. You don't mind me doing this, do you? I think it's very important, actually. And I believe it's the Lord. Exodus 16, verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the murmurings. This is two or three times. Uh, I have read this recently. Uh, so this is Exodus 16, 11 to 15. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the murmurings of the Israelites speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and between the two evenings you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quills came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the Jew lay round about the camp. And when the Jew had gone, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a fine, round, and flake-like thing, as fine as uh, hoarfrost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said one to another, Manna, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Isn't that beautiful? Imagine the Lord gives us this to eat. It's so amazing. This is the bread. I want you to lift your hand and say, the Lord looks after me. Lord looks after me. I say it like you mean it. Regardless of, of your circumstance right now, something supernatural wants to happen in our lives. I take it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say that with me. Something supernatural. I know that we can prepare, and I believe it is good to prepare, and we're preparing a list for you. I think you're going to get it this weekend and Sunday uh, of some of the things that has been suggested to us that you can prepare for as we go into these next weeks and couple of months. You know, there's a lot of people out there, they think, you know, there, there could be power go off, you know, maybe for 30 days. Some are saying, you know, prepare for 30 days, all of those different things, you know. So it means just having enough water. Uh, you know, and I would never say these things, but having come through COVID and, uh, you know, not having any toilet roll, and uh, I'll preach to this section over here, not having any <laughs> toilet roll, I'm telling toilet roll is much more comfortable than a newspaper, praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> so it might behoove you just to stash a few. I'm not telling you to go out and clear the shelves of Costco, but, uh, but I do believe that there are a lot of people out there that are starting to stock up because you know, things are shifting already. Amen. So we, we're just putting together just a little bit of a list. It's not a fear list. Amen. It's a prepared list. Yes. It's just simply that if, you know, if, if, if a wheel did come off, you know, I'm not telling you to go and buy, you know, six years of powdered food. That's not what I'm telling you to do. If you're led to do that, you do what you're led to do. Amen. But I just couldn't, I just could not even think about eating powdered food for six years. I, I would rather just let the rapture come and take us, amen. But you know, the wonderful thing about it is, is the Lord didn't make the Israelites eat powdered food. Did you ever think about that? He didn't make them eat powdered food. You know, he gave them fresh bread. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I receive that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We could be fixing to see a modern-day miracle of God. Hallelujah. I mean, he flew in quail, and, you know, it would be great if a bunch of chickens arrived in your backyard. Hallelujah. But you see, we're so far on from that that we think it's ridiculous even to think about that, and we need to go ahead and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that you don't have. You know, and what you think is powdered food. But if, if the Lord is asking you to do that, go ahead and do that. But you have to understand that somebody's getting rich somewhere. You have to understand that, that somebody's getting rich. They're not giving you it as a, 
you know, dollar for dollar thing. You know, here you are. You know, we don't want you to go hungry. Somebody's making money. I have no problem with anybody making money, but it's not at the expense of dread and fear. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it's the truth. It's not at the expense of the, of the innocent, you know, being afraid. Oh, my God, they're coming to take us away. It's, it's all going in the, in the next thing. You know, you sign up to uh, whatever. So if you have all of that, well, praise the Lord. Let everybody know, and you can share your powdered food. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can haul it out from under your stairs. Praise the Lord. Went quiet in this Presbyterian assembly. Praise the Lord. I'm just being honest with you. Amen. If, you, if you're looking forward to eating powdered food, knock yourself out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Psalm 78, 23 to 29, in the New Living Translation says this, but he commanded the skies to open. He opened the doors of the heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat. He gave them bread from heaven. They ate the food of angels. <laughs> I'm just building your faith. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hand and say, I take the provision of the Lord. But we're not being silly. We're our sin is... Let's get some water. Let's get some necessities. You know, some of the ministers, you know, that a lot of people look to say, well, word on the street, possibilities is that power could go out. You know, get yourself a couple of extra gas, propane, you know, jars, you know, so that you can cook outside and five gallon drums so you can flush your toilet, all of those different things. But it's not telling you to go crazy. It's just telling you is to be prepared just in case something like that would happen. Can I have a big amen? How many people have realized at this stage, I, I, I actually try to be very balanced. Wave your hands. I actually try to keep everybody away from the ditches. I'm trying my best to keep everybody away from the ditches because fear reigns there. Amen. Come on. Praise is the highway. Hallelujah. So I want you to listen to what I'm saying tonight in verse 23 to 29 in the Living Translation, 78. You can put it up there, Psalm 78, 23 to 29. But he commanded the skies to open. He opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat. He gave them bread from heaven. They ate the food of angels. God gave them all they could hold. Underline that, guys. Come on, where's the spirit of faith in this room tonight? Come on, shut it out. It's going to be okay. Come on, shut it out again. It's going to be okay. Brother Copeland prophesied that everything would be all right. Everything is going to be okay for those who want. Stay in faith and walk in love. So what am I checking? I'm checking my faith levels. I'm telling everybody and their dog, get your faith up. I'm telling everybody to stay in love. If there's any unforgiveness in our hearts, then get, get rid of it because prayer is going to produce. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. Prayer is going to produce. So it says, as he released the east wind in the heavens and guided the south wind by his mighty power, he rained down meat as thick as dust, birds as plentiful as the sand on the seashore. He caused the birds to fall within their camp and all around their tents. The people ate their fill, and he gave them what they craved. I wonder would the Lord drop a little cheesecake in there? <laughs> Just saying, Lord, have mercy, just a little cheesecake. <laughs> it says it. He gave them what they craved, a little coconut pie. <laughs> How many people could take a slice of coconut pie? Just a, yeah, just, you know. Just. 
Apple tart and custard. Ooh. Cadbury's fruit and nut. Do you know what's got a hazelnut in every bite? Topic. Pure milk chocolate for your delight. Topic. That shows you how programmed we were as children. We would watch the commercials every time they would come on. What's got a hazelnut in every bite? Topic. What did we all want? Topic. When we went into the grocery store, what did we head for? Topic. Did we even like it? That didn't matter. We wanted Topic. Do you remember Topic, Brita? <laughs> We had a toothpaste advert. Susie, don't forget about the crest. <laughs> <laughs> and then fairy liquid. Mild green, fairy liquid. <laughs> How many people can remember your commercials? It's a, there's a reason behind it, you know that. So that you're walking down the aisle, you can hear the jingle. <laughs> How many people's been singing, first there was a fragrance yeah. since Sunday? <laughs> I, I have people reaching out to me and tell me, Pastor, I can't get it out of my head. I can't get it. <laughs> better than they're coming to take you <laughs> ain't nobody coming to take you this is America land of the free <laughs> what's wrong with you you're very silent don't you know that hallelujah Glory to God. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have so much joy. Hallelujah. Anybody else got lots of joy? Hallelujah. Anybody? Come on. Tell your face. Tell your face. Amen. <laughs> you have lots of joy. Amen. Of that. Uh, I said, anybody got lots of joy? And some people went. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll come over here. <laughs> Scary bunch over there. <laughs> this joy. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29.5 in the Amplified says this, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out. I mean, you don't need a big closet. When God's really doing the miraculous, you don't need a big closet. Ladies, you've got to wear that one frock, that one dress, all the way around the wilderness. Every time I see you, you're wearing the same thing. It's getting real familiar. Imagine you had to wear that stripy sweatshirt for 40 years. <laughs> we don't, do you not think like this? I think like this. I have the wildest imagination. I'm thinking, Lord, if I had to wear this for 40 years, 40 years, getting out, putting on the same pants every day for 40 years. I mean, it would really cut down on time. What are we wearing? What are we wearing? Oh, that's right. We just have the same pair of pants. Let's go. No shoes to choose from. Just the same pair of boots for 40 years. Sandals. 
Sandals. No Gucci sandals. But these were amazing sandals because they had the hand of God on them. Not the hand of a designer, the hand of God. Because these sandals, something of a miracle was working in them. But could you imagine the smell of sandals after 40 years? I mean, you can smell, you can, you can hardly stand the smell of sandals after a summer. those sandals after 40 years you'll not have to ask anybody where they are <laughs> anybody see my sandals <laughs> it is mandatory everybody leaves their footwear outside the tent but I guess if God's hand was upon those sandals and those sandals didn't wear out, then I don't think they'd have smelled either. Oh, man. <laughs> For those who, who listened to the disobedient sister on the second row, she must be disgruntled about something. She said, first there was a fragrance. <laughs> Yes, it's called the Rose of Sharon. <laughs> Woo, feisty crowd tonight. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, leave it all on the altar. Praise the Lord. So Deuteronomy 29, 5 says, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness and your clothes have not worn out upon you and your sandals have not worn off your feet. Proverbs 8, 17 to 21, in verse 18, it says, durable riches, durable riches. Deuteronomy 2, verse 7, you all doing okay? Yeah. This is good. This is building our faith. Yeah. When you hear everything else that's going on, oh, my God. To think the unthinkable now, God is still doing the impossible. Hallelujah. Yeah. Still doing the impossible. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 2 verse 7 in the New Living Translation says this, For the Lord your God has blessed you in everything you have done. He has watched your every step through this great wilderness. And during these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you lacked nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks for that right now. Hallelujah. We lack, come on, declare it. We lack nothing. Hallelujah. Even if you're 16, declare it in the name of Jesus. 18, declare it. 20, declare it. We lack nothing. Come on, this is not the faith of your parents. This is our faith in the name of Jesus. I'm building my faith. Glory to God. I wish I'd have been told this at 16. Talking in tongues at 16, but they didn't build my faith. They didn't even tell me that we could be healed. You're on your own when it came to that. God healed some and he didn't heal them all. But thank God that knowledge finds us. Yeah. Hallelujah. That Jesus healed them all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shut it out. I am, healed. I am healed. You know, no matter what age we are, whether you're in your teens or whether you're older, if you have something in your body that's not so right, you can be releasing your faith right now. You can be commanding your bones to straighten. You can be commanding anything that is, that is not right in your body to, to work. You don't have to wait. You don't have to rely on your parents' faith. Hallelujah. You can build your faith. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You can become a miracle, a testimony. So let's go to Leviticus then. Praise the Lord. Leviticus 26. Can we put it on the screen, please? Leviticus 26, 4 and 5, and 9 and 10. Leviticus 26, 4 and 5. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. There we go. And I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crops, and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Next verse. Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest, and your grape harvest will overlap with the season. Hallelujah. 
Go to verse 9 and verse 10, please. Hallelujah. And I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. Next verse. You will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. Hallelujah. Come on, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Come on, give him thanks. So what are we doing? We're building ourselves up. We're getting the word of the Lord in our hearts. This is what you do. You get yourself a true north. Praise the Lord. You know, we're going to play that uh, beautiful interview that we had with Dodie Osteen uh, very soon. And, uh, you know, Dodie, she had cancer that had metastasized in her body. And it was not a good report. I think she was given two weeks to live or something like that. But I'm telling you, she put everything of life before her eyes and held her confession. And uh, she was miraculously healed and is still on the earth today. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord thanks. Hallelujah. So we've learned all these years is uh, for Karma is to get something good in front of her eyes. Amen. Pictures of life, pictures of health. You know what we bought? Uh, Pastor Karen's mother recently, um, her eyesight's dimming a little bit, but what we bought her recently was a large, um, like, picture frame, digital picture frame. And what the family does now, it, 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 we all are linked to it, and we send all of our photographs. So when she's sitting on the couch, she can look and see all the things that her family is doing all over the world. Can I have a big amen? So you have the family in New Zealand, you have us here, all these different things. So all those photographs are converging into one space, hallelujah, on her wall so that she can see. Come on, everybody. There's, there's ways to, to, to make it possible for people to want to live. When your family's dispersed around the world, you're not seeing everything like you used to see. Nobody is dropping in like they used to drop in. This is a way for her to see, to give her hope, feel like she's in our lives. Amen. Come on, everybody. This is, this is how we, come on, this is how we do life. God gives us wisdom in how we do things. Lift your hand and receive wisdom right now. Amen. Wisdom in how you give people hope to stay on the earth. And not to check out, well, I'm on my own. What's the point in me staying? Every point. Every point. Amen. You put life before your eyes. Amen. So that that is what your gaze is set upon. Hallelujah. So in verse 9, it says this in the Amplified, For I will be leaning toward you with favor and regard for you, rendering you fruitful, multiplying you and establishing and ratifying my covenant with you. It's just so powerful. Verse 10 in the message, you'll still be eating from last year's harvest when you have to clean out the barns to make room for the new crops. In other words, you're not going to miss a beat. Come on, everybody. And beat being the, you know, the word. Eat your beets. They're good for your heart, good for your blood pressure. Eat your beets. And the New Living Translation, some of you get that later, hallelujah. The New Living Translation, it says, you will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to get rid of the leftovers from the previous year to make room for the new, each new harvest. I take it in the name of Jesus. Now, Amos 9.13, New Living Translation says this, the time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Then the terraced vineyards on the hills of Israel will drip with sweet wine. In the message translation, it says this, yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Many of you have known this scripture, but we take it again. Come on. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. 
one thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings like wine pouring off the mountain and the hills. And that's when we were declaring, you remember it? Blessings, blessings everywhere. Shut it out. Blessings, blessings everywhere. One more time. Blessings, blessings everywhere. And so these are just several scriptures to hopefully align you to get your mind set on God's plan, God's purpose, God's heart. That when you hear the rummagings and the things that are being said, and even though it may be of an earthly wisdom to, to prepare of sorts, have enough water, have enough toilet roll, just in case the unthinkable did happen for a few days, the grids went down, you know, no fear in that because you're already prepared in faith. Hallelujah. A couple of torches, you know, several batteries, just stuff. Amen. That, that just makes sense to have. Amen. I don't know about you, but in the case of the storms here in Oklahoma, I have a torch at the side of my bed 24-7 anyway. Amen. So they're just, you know, there's those things. If you have a safe, have cash in it. You know, we've always said that. Always have a little bit of cash somewhere. Doesn't have to be, you know, millions of dollars, but have enough that if the banks go down, you have a means of exchange. Praise the Lord. Can I have a big amen? amen. How many people's glad we're talking about this tonight? Amen. Why? Because he's preparing us. We're being prepared in every area. Praise the Lord. Give a big amen to the Lord. Come on, shout a big amen. 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 Lift your hands and shout it out. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Beyond, measure. Beyond measure. I receive, I receive. what's being talked about what's tonight. Talked about tonight. I, receive I receive the word of God, word of God. And, the and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, helping is helping me in every area, in every, area. In every dealing, in every dealing. Wise, dealing wise dealing in my life. In my life. I, I receive it now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I'll tell you what Pastor Karn does. Is that Pastor Karn, every time we receive anything of a cash nature, cash nature, Karn saves it. The 50, 20, 100. Doesn't see the light of day. <laughs> Mrs. Brady says, thank you. <clears throat> and the cash goes into what we call a safe. I don't know the code for the safe. <laughs> I'll say to her at times, I said, you know, uh, we could use some of your stash. She said, don't even think about it. <laughs> Sometimes we do. But I can tell you more times than not. She says the bank is closed. <laughs> Pray for me. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. All, if all you got is 200 bucks, stick it in there. Praise the Lord. It means of exchange. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Come on, let's believe for money right now. Come on, everybody. Let's believe. Come on, Kaleo, calling those things that be not as though they were. Come on, call it, summons it in the name of Jesus. Come on. Money's coming to you from every direction on feet. Come on, you remember this? Come on, everybody. Money cometh to the body of Christ now. In the name of Jesus, money cometh to the body of Christ now. In the name of Jesus, money cometh. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, hallelujah. 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 Oh, give him a shout. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, we're just going to keep doing. Isaac sowed in the land. We're going to keep sowing. We're going to keep tithing. Praise the Lord. We're going to keep doing what we know to do. We're not going to let up. Praise the Lord. Because we know in whom we believe. Praise the Lord. And we know he's able. Shut it out. He is able. Are you ready to give on to the Lord tonight? Amen. Make your checks payable to LRMC. If you're given by the way, the information is on your screen. Praise the Lord. Coming up right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those that are watching online, text to give 84321. 84321. Hallelujah. As I said, checks, LRMC. If you're given by the way of an envelope with your card, debit card, amen. Put your digits on there. Praise the Lord. Your, your, all your details. Hallelujah. Cash app, dollar sign millennial church. Amen. And uh, the Lord mightily bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody receive anything from that tonight? Did it give you hope? It'll build your faith. Come on, let's respond to it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Those that are watching online, the information is on your screen right now so that you can give from wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't forget that we see you. Amen. Thank God for you. You are not the invisible. Amen. I just thank God for stream, that it's not an alternative. It really is what it is for those that cannot make it to church. Praise the Lord so that you do not miss a beat. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? Let's go ahead and serve the people tonight. Thank you so much. Remember, touch the buckets with your phone. If you're given electronically, praise the Lord. A point of contact, a point of I love it. I, that was not me who started that. That was some of you all who started that, and I just love it. It was Jeremy, I think. He just had a point of contact, and, you know, I, I love it. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is faith in action. Amen. It's just not out of sight, out of mind. I just give by text to give. No, I'm in it. I'm in it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I'm going to go and take a few minutes with you. I want to read this to you, if you don't mind. I believe it will bless you. I want everybody to listen, from the youngest to the oldest of us, because I believe that this is very important. Whether we realize this or not, I, I believe, and uh, even when I was not a U.S. citizen, and even though I was a British citizen, I'm a dual citizen, I have citizenship of uh, not only the United States, but also of the United Kingdom. And we also could be Irish citizens if we chose to be that as well. Living in the north of Ireland, that was a privilege that was uh, bestowed upon us. So really, we have three places that we could hang our hat. The Lord has brought us to America for these end days, of which we are very honored and very privileged to be here. But even through those years that we lived in Northern Ireland, I would always watch all things America, even though I was very clued in to what was happening in the United Kingdom and Ireland, I would always watch, I would always listen to what was going, even the Bush administration, all of those different things, I would listen, I was always interested in what was happening in America. Did we know that the God would move us to America? No. Uh, but we are so glad that he did, Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. And I have a tremendous conviction, tremendous interest in this great nation uh, because I believe it is an answer to the world. Praise the Lord. Very unique. In just a very short two, three hundred years, look what it has accomplished. And look what it has done to send money around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many would not be in the kingdom today if it had not been for the money that was sent from America to evangelize the world. How many people understand that? So that in itself, you must never forget. Because money sown from America is a harvest for America. Lift your hand and receive this. Don't ever forget that. Just because you did it 20 years ago doesn't mean to say it's gone. Your harvest is 20 years closer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Carl, don't let me forget to talk to you about Peru, please. Hallelujah. A world without America. Recently, a number of respected church leaders, this was 1999, but so alive. 
Recently, a number of respected church leaders, frustrated with America's slow turn to repentance, has proclaimed that divine wrath is coming to our land. If God does not destroy America, one influential pastor wrote, he will have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. Certainly, there are many things morally wrong with America, but America is not Sodom or Gomorrah. Neither is it a reemergence of the spirit of ancient Babylon. You will not find charged against this land the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth, Revelations 18, 24. The spiritual influence of these archetypes is here, just as they are also manifested throughout the world. But America is much more than the sum of its sins and its failures. America does not answer to any singular prophetic profile. It is not the promised land, but it is a land of promise. For those who predict the decline and the fall of this nation, I'm sorry to disappoint you. America has only just begun to arise. Indeed, as we enter the 21st century, I believe we will find this nation, imperfect as it is, increasing its global influence. It is easy to call for, predict, and then anticipate the manifestation of divine wrath. It plays perfectly into our fears. And once you adjust your perception to expect doom, religious zeal supplies all sorts of apocalyptic visions of the end. The problem is visions born of fear are not synonymous with visions born of God. For more than 30 years, I have heard scores of doom and destruction predictions that were going to be fulfilled by a certain date. We were supposed to all die in the nuclear war in 1979. We were to be raptured in 1988, then raptured again in 1989. When 88 did not come to pass, then the Gulf War would turn into Armageddon. And of course, in 1998, 50 years after Israel's birth, the Lord was to return. Shall I go on, Frangipan says. Please, Francis, keep reading. I cannot remember one prophecy that has been even remotely fulfilled. The fact is, instead of destroying the world, the Lord has raised up what may be the most expansive prayer movement in generations. He has been reconciling and uniting his church, and for the first time in his history, revival is beginning in numbers of places and converts by the hundreds of millions. That is not a misprint. Have come to Christ worldwide during this same period. People thought the world was going to disintegrate. Instead, we have entered the greatest season of harvest in the history of the church. Why did these predictions of wrath fall to the ground unfulfilled? Maybe there are many reasons, but the plain obvious truth is that God is more patient and merciful than we previously imagined. Can I have a big amen? Amen. In fact, I believe that at least in the next few years, the Lord has something else planned for America other than its destruction. The Lord spoke about discerning the origin of prophetic words in in the book of Deuteronomy. He said in Deuteronomy 18, 21 to 22, And you may say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. It's very sensible. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. God's word plainly says, if the thing does not come about, the Lord did not speak it. We all make mistakes. Sometimes we are moved by fears to make presumptuous predictions. A person is not a false prophet because he makes a mistake. The Lord does not condemn me, and neither am I condemning anyone. But we need to admit when we are wrong and examine why our predictions fell to the ground. In the New Testament, Paul instructs the church, let two or three prophets speak and let the others pass judgment. But if a revelation is made to another who is seated, let the first keep silent. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 to 30. So we've heard the potential for divine wrath, but now it is time to balance the message of judgment with vision and mercy. It is time for some who have been seated to share the revelation, you be the judge. Before we continue, however, let me clarify two things. One, if you are trapped in habitual sin, you should fear. 
There is only one antidote to this fear, and that is to repent and get right with God. The second clarification is this. Until the transformation of our mortal bodies, the Lord's corrective judgments will be with us always. Those whom he loves, he reproves and disciplines. It is good that God judges what is wrong in us. And may he never stop judging the sin in me or in the church or in America. There will always be consequences to people's actions. But let me assure you, there is a difference between God's corrective judgments and the manifestation of his wrath. Corrective judgment is guided by his mercy. mercy. Wrath is the venting of anger. It is not in the Lord's heart to destroy this nation. Humble and heal, yes, but not destroy. Can I have a big amen? amen? My passion is to inspire the church to see America the way a loving parent views an unbroken teenager, which is how I believe God sees this land. He is not ready to destroy us. In truth, his pa- he is patiently working his will. He will fulfill what he has begun with this land, and let us not become impatient as we wait for his fulfillment. The very least the Lord wants to do with America is use it to keep the world open for the harvest. Can we say amen to that? You all doing okay? You enjoying this? For that reason alone, we must stand in continued intercession for this country. Yet if we possess no clear vision for the United States, may the Lord reveal his passion for mercy, even when we are convinced he is warning of wrath. If the Nazis had won... World War II. If the Nazis had won World War II. To help us perspective, to help give us perspective on Christ's view of America, let's imagine what civilization would be like today without the United States. Let's step back in time and consider where the world would be if the leading Axis powers, Germany, Japan, had defeated the Allies in World War II. To make this alternate reality credible, this weave into our imaginary world some facts about America as it was in the 1930s. Prior to World War II, much of America was in serious moral decline. The moral restraints of the Victorian era had evaporated in the heat of the Roaring Twenties. A tremendous upswing of organized crime brought gang violence, extortion, and corruption, which infiltrated huge segments of society and government. Racial injustice towards blacks was rampant, and prejudice against the more recent immigrants, the Irish and Italians, the Asians, and the Jews was a way of life. I have forgiven people for that. Then in 1933, the singular redeeming virtue of the times, prohibition was repealed. It passed by a a national vote of almost 75%. Literally overnight, America went from outlawing alcoholic beverages to drunken celebrations in the streets. These were the facts concerning America in the 20s and 30s. America suffered the consequences of its sins as the Great Depression lingered and worsened, but God had no intention of destroying America. The Lord knew that all hell was marshalling forces in Germany and Japan. America, sinful as it was, was vital to the defense of God's plan. But imagine if frustrated church leaders in the 30s had begun to ask God to judge the U.S. for its sins. And suppose he actually did what these short-sighted leaders asked. He allowed the Great Depression to crumble into anarchy and civil war, which as a result fractured the U.S. into three regional regional sub-countries, North, South, and West. So in our imaginary world, the year is 1939, because God has answered the prayer of angry Christians. America does not exist. Then World War II explodes. By 1942, The tidal wave of German military power has advanced and conquered all its surrounding nations. In 1943, England falls. Almost at the same time, Africa too bows beneath the shadow of the swastika. 
Then, as 1945 begins, the Nazis secretly test their first atomic bombs. Two months later, they unleash them upon 16 Russian cities. 25 million people die in the atomic blast, and with them, remember this is imaginary, without America, mankind's hope of resisting the Third Reich is also destroyed. In the Far East, meanwhile, no nation was strong enough to match the fierce, unrelenting might of the Japanese. The Imperial Army crushed and pillaged both China and Korea. It rolled southwestward and overwhelmed India and Pakistan, making surrogate armies of their vast multitudes. They then fulfilled their bloodlust upon Southeast Asia and Australia. By 1946, the empire of the rising sun had ascended over Asia to the Hawaiian Islands. Japan's western boundaries extended to Pakistan and central Russia, and the Third Reich ruled everything else. Throughout the world, a grid of satanic control had locked in place, securing the spiritual realms over the earth in impenetrable darkness. This leads me on to the consequences. It is not hard to imagine the above scenario or something like it if in the 30s the balance of power in the world was void of the United States of America. Obviously, thankfully, in spite of its sins, God did not destroy America. Can I have a big amen? Instead, he healed our nation and actually made it stronger. Come on, shut it out. Thank God for the United States of America. Come on, say it one more time. Thank God for the United States of America. One more time. Thank God for the United States of America. But this courier journey into today's time frame, yes, we do have problems in our world, but what would civilization be like if the concept of a free world had died during World War II? Isn't this amazing reading? I love it. The United States is reunited, but it is ruled by Nazi Germany and policed by German SS troops and Gestapo. In this world without American influence, democracy is not to be found anywhere on the earth. The world we live in is a totalitarian society. It is void of freedom. Mein Kampf, Hitler's life story is taught and applied in every level of academia. His racist ideologies are enforced and framed in America's new constitution. Adolf Hitler has not just replaced George Washington as our founding father. He has pronounced himself savior of the world. Even our calendars have to be reset. The first year of the new order of the Third Reich coincides with Hitler's birth year. American children enter school singing hymns to the Fuhrer. Each child is without deformity, for each children with birth defects do not live beyond their first week. If you know your history, then you know exactly what I am talking to you about. Americans have been trained to believe that this is new world, having been cleansed of Jews, gypsies, and other so-called undesirables, has evolved into a purer form of humanity. German cold social engineering has assigned values to races, except for the Japanese. All non-whites are classified as servant races. All liberty is gone. There exists no freedom of press or right of protest. There is no balance of power in government, no political parties, no open debate, no forums of ideas. There is a state church, but freedom of religion is no longer a civil right. There exists no open, vibrant, Evangelical Christian community, Pentecostalism is considered a mental disorder, and those who practice spiritual gifts are institutionalized. Though there might indeed be a true underground church, attendance is at the risk of one's life. There are no evangelical books, no contemporary Christian music, no spiritual media, resources. The last five popes are German-born, and Billy Graham is a fairly common but insignificant name. Certainly one of the worst consequences would exist in the Middle East. There would be no Israel. In fact, except for those few surviving Jews hiding in remote recesses of the earth, a world without America would be a world without Jews. Yet beyond all this, the most tragic reality is that since w uh, World War II, the expansion of evangelical Christianity has virtually ceased. 
instead of the nearly half billion souls that worldwide have entered into the kingdom of God since 1946, the apostasy has reached its full zenith. The fact is, in spite of what is wrong and sinful in America, without its role as the leader of the free world, there would be no harvest today. Indeed, there would be no great, there w indeed, there would be great and incurable heartache on earth and much less joy in heaven in a world without America. So the next time you want to bash this country, the next time you want to sit and talk about how bad it is, and others that want to talk about how bad it is, and religious leaders talk about how sinful it is, I want you to remember that even in America's darkest day, she is still much brighter than any other nation's brightest moment. God brought this country into being. And God is not looking to destroy this country when this country has people in it that call upon that name. How many people believe this tonight? So when you hear people talking stupidly, about God coming after this country and all the wrong is because of all the wrong things. I just put it to you. Start reading your Bible. Start listening to what is truth. Know the heart of God. Know the love of God. And know that God needs America more than we even know that he needs it. How many people believe this tonight? Just lift your hands and pray in the spirit just for a couple of minutes for this great country. I know we squibble and squabble about our leaders, but my God, I look at other countries' leaders and I think, steady on, steady on. You're still here where it not been raptured. That means we can speak the end from the beginning. We can declare the end from the beginning. We can speak the plan and the fire of God over this great nation. We can hold it in the name of Jesus with the conviction. Manjola, come on, all you young people, pray for your country. In the name of Jesus, you may not understand everything that I said tonight, but I am telling you, even in your teens, you have to thank God for this country that you have been born into. In the name of Jesus, there's a great responsibility upon each and every one of us. Come on, take the hand of the person beside you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, pray. Pray over this great country. Pray as we come to what I believe is such an important moment in the history of this country. But I'm telling you, no matter what happens in this country on the 5th of November, Jesus is still Lord. Amen. And I am telling you, we will forge as a church and we will forge as a people and we will forge as a nation under God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we will advance as the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And even in the days of the early church, Amen. They flourished under Nero. And so it doesn't matter who's in the White House. Truly, at the end of the day, it matters who's in your house, who's Lord of your house, who's Lord of your life, who's Lord in the Vrambadanza La Praia of your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. And as we take this communion tonight, we take it and we settle it in our hearts once and for all over this great country that we will bless it with our lips. We will bless it with our words. Don't say things like it's never been as bad as what it's been right now. I, there's been dark days in this country. You just didn't live in them, some of you. So don't be speaking like you're speaking from an authoritative position. There's been a few dark days, dark times, 
But thank God that the light shines on in the darkness. And the darkness, come on, has never overpowered the light. In every generation, there are always those that will hold the torch high and allow the beacon to shine. Hallelujah to the Lamb. How many people love this country? Let me see your hands. Come on. I love it. Hallelujah. And I am proud to be an American. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 